Exciting news! I am moving to a new location. I am moving from having a kiosk in the current mall I'm in to having a full-sized store in a different mall in a different city and I want to show you guys before I totally take it apart and pack it all up um, the, this kiosk that I've spent two years building and restructuring and adding stuff to and um, a lot of people ask like oh I want to get a kiosk in a mall too I would usually push people against that because some of my most successful artist friends don't do that. They, they still do the, the best art shows, the best craft shows. Being uh, Running a kiosk is very, very hard because you really have to have employees and managing employees is a whole different level from being an artist and being a successful artist and selling. Uh, managing employees is like an entire different can of worms, an entire different skill set that if you don't have it, like automatically you have to develop it it takes time it takes learning it takes a lot of mistakes and problems and realizations um, and maybe you're a business owner and you know exactly what I'm talking about but in any case um, I uh, I would say to new artists I always push you uh, what I did for the first eight years that I was a full-time artist is I did shows 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 and the difference between being a successful artist and a starving artist was finding the good shows and finding the right shows and and just learn figuring out a few other things to get my pieces into the category of people want to buy for a price that works for me but it was mostly just finding the good shows and finding the good shows meant came from hanging out with really successful artists which are like one out of a hundred there's a hundred beautiful artists and there's only one of them that can make their living doing that and the other 99 are just they have to have day jobs and they're they'll always have day jobs they'll never give up their day jobs because they're they don't know how to step into that other side i was lucky enough that i, I after suffering for years i found some people who were on the other side and i clung to them until i figured out how to do it but i have a whole video on that it's called how to sell your art you can look up matt's crazy art how to sell your art you have to put my my name of my channel in first or you'll end up getting somebody else's video, which will probably be horrible since it isn't mine. So anyway, um, I have two videos, one called How to Sell Your Art and one, another one called How to Price Your Art. But I go into depth with those. Right now, I just want to show you my kiosk before I take it apart. It is sparse. Most of it's like down to a quarter of the inventory. You'll see a lot of empty displays and the table's a mess. It's not the way I want to show it off, but I'm going to be packing up tomorrow and I really can't afford to try to make it really nice for a better video because I got to get out of here and start moving to the new place. But I wanted to show you guys and because I know a lot of you have been wanting to see and I, I showed a lot of peak previews and other videos. I kind of went around it once in one video, but a lot of new subscribers probably don't even know where that video is. So I really want to show you guys. So here we go. So this is the view when you're coming down. And I had these giant wooden letters cut out. I designed them and cut them. And then the next year I decided I wanted a vertical version of the same thing. And so, cause I wanted to be um, visible from, from far, far away. This is my um, earring carousel. It's kind of empty now, but it's made from paint canvases and frames from paint, other paint canvases. And um, there's a little, I usually have like a display up here on top, but um, this wood piece pops off and underneath I keep boxes of earrings and stuff to resupply. And anyway, um, the mirror, um, these two guys empty, this bracelet display empty. I built this entire thing. They give you the frame of the, the, the kiosk, which is actually on wheels. It's the smallest kiosk they have. And then uh, and then you, you build displays on top of it. I built an entire giant wooden box. And then I leaned all these displays up against it. Some of them are, are screwed attached. Some of them are just kind of leaning. I have a gazillion ring boxes. Store supply is great for these little ring boxes with the felt slots. Um, a lot of these rings are um, just, some of the stuff I just retail, I just buy impulse items because it helps 
fill in the gaps with keeping sales up. And then um, about 70% of it I hand make. So these are just stainless steel men's rings. Um, here's some of these little bullet crystals. I just get them as they are and put them on cords and some of these others. I was intending to wire wrap these more. I have, I, they just came on cords like that. I haven't gotten to it. Here's a deer antler pendants. Um, there's a couple pieces. Again, this whole thing is usually full. This bracelet thing, everything is full, but you're seeing this when I was trying to liquidate everything before moving. Um, I made these little silhouettes. There's red, yellow, green, and then um, on this side, the same silhouettes are purple, blue, green. Um, these had silver earrings, silver necklaces, totally empty. This had pocket watches hanging from this little swervy display, and they're all gone at the moment. Um, pocket watches I didn't make, I just retailed them. Here's a giant display for a gazillion necklaces. Here's a few left over. This is antique brass. These are just charms on chains, charms on hooks. Nothing really that expensive or exciting, just more impulse stuff. Um, here's my handmade, my handmade rings start right. And uh, these, these are railing wood pieces that I covered in velvet years ago. Um, Again, you see that they're mostly empty. Here's my rings. I, uh, most of the, these are like for little, little tiny girls. They're like size four. Here, these two boxes are size five. I try to do plain metal and then stone, although people move them constantly when they're uh, trying them on. But plain metal uh, with a stone. And then here's size six, plain metal with a stone. Size seven, plain metal with a stone. There's uh, size seven covered by the mirror. Here is um, size eight, plain metal stone. Size nine, plain metal stone. That should be over there. And that should be over there. You're probably seeing a bunch of them that got mixed up. I've been making so many videos, I've been neglecting. Um, these are just more impulse buy rings. Watches, I used to put them on my own leather cuffs, but now people just completely buy them the way they are so I just retail some of these cool watches because I find unusual ones other people don't have um, there's one funky piece left on that whole display some more bracelets some more fun stuff again very very mostly empty um, some of the bracelets I get pre-made just to fill in the gaps to keep up with the inventory especially during the holidays when people are going crazy buying but most of them I hand make uh, you might recognize some from videos. I made this, I got this mannequin foot and I have screws on the back. It holds anklets. There's no anklets on it right now. I usually put it up here. This is my glass display, also from uh, Store Supply and my little tiny silhouettes. They all came in black, but I, I colored them different colors. And there's my higher end pieces, all from previous videos. Um, here's my sign. Everything did used to be handmade before I had, I found I just had to do some retail impulse buy stuff, um, just to keep up with everything and pay the rent. Here's my mannequin. This is a beautiful Veronica. I made a stand for her out of wood. So she's a removable. I can pick her up and move her at the end of the day. Otherwise I wouldn't be able to close the stand. Um, just piles of stuff I didn't mean to put there, but I'm just finding places for everything right now. These are just boxes of stones and supplies and stuff. This is my camera stand for when I'm actually, I'll put the camera up here and, and then shoot down onto the table where you'll see me making videos. It's just a ring box of more. This is a ring box I carry around when I want to give a free ring out to somebody if they want to model a piece for a video. Um, so this giant, table display I, I built this actually is a sound system I can play my own music from here this is my uh, what's called jump rings all different sizes per wheel you can get these wheels for like a dollar that one the, the lid broke on that little part but I have silver antique brass antique copper regular copper and black gun metal I have four of them the, the copper antique copper and regular copper are together a uh, terribly messy table, but like I said, I, 
I didn't want to take an hour and clean everything up and make it look beautiful because I need to get this video out and I have a live show tonight and I wanted to show you guys because tomorrow I'm going to start tearing this whole thing apart. Um, here's all my wire. I keep them on... Well, actually, that's leather, but I keep it on these screws sticking out. Um, it's way messier than I like to keep it. There's Melvin. Um... There's Stickman. So it's a horrible mess right now, and I apologize. But um, again, I just wanted you guys to see. Here's where I keep a lot of my supplies, and this is where moving is gonna really give me a lot of room. I love to keep these boxes open at all times so I could just grab them as I need. But basically, this, this box I started to make for like, you can see it says stones for rings and earrings. Um, just kind of chunky, different pieces. Uh, this red one is supposed to be stones for necklace pendants. Um, but that really doesn't even keep up with the supply. I just have, I have boxes and boxes of stones now from all the kinds of gifts people gave me, from stocking up, from ordering way too many, and then realizing I didn't have time to make them all. So I have like tons of these. Like, I'm gonna have to, I want to organize them all when I move to the new place. Tons of supplies to go through. Basically, these are just little bins where I've just been shoving stuff that I can't deal with at the moment. I might take one, make a necklace, and then shove 30 of them in one of these little boxes. Um, there's broken watches I need to work on, figuring out if, I, if they're worth saving. There's more stones in there. And if you just keep digging, there's just more stones, more stones, more stones. Um... So every stone deserves a home as a necklace pendant or a ring or something. So hopefully we want to get them into like a support area where they can be displayed for me to see and then I can pull them out. But anyway, okay, so these boxes, they used to be $2 at Walmart. Now they're like $3.50, but I have a gazillion of these boxes. Uh, this one is just for chips, all different kinds of chips. Um, you can see rose quartz, amethyst, lapis lazuli, dyed turquoise halite, citrine, uh, carnelian, tiger's eye, red tiger's eye, aventurine, some kind of dark blue jasper. Some this is called uh, red, uh, what's it called? Um, it was listed as red coral. I'm pretty sure it might be dyed halite. Still, you never know. This is assorted. These are quartzite of different blues also dyed these are green dyed jasper yellow green dyed jasper uh black probably obsidian whoops so that's those um and then i have a, a whole box for every size this is 10 millimeter um so you can see tiger's eye african turquoise which is green jasper I don't know what that is, some kind of green agate. That's, I think that's lapis lazuli or sodalite. Um, snowflake obsidian, some kind of a striped black and white jasper, some kind of really cool bird's eye jasper or something. Um, not sure. Whoa, that's not what I wanted to do. Who told you to zoom? I want you to focus. Uh, okay, I, that's not really telling me much. Wait a minute, there we go. Let's see, look at that one. That's kind of interesting. There's like little crystals growing in it, really cool. Anyway, uh, some kind of pink agate. Hematite. Uh, black lava stone. So that's my 10 millimeter. That's the largest I go for round beads. And then 8 millimeter, I, where are you? Here you are. These are all mixed up. Here's, oh, well, here's six millimeter. I'll just do it out of order. Here's six millimeter. And I, I have a lot of strands to, that I need to organize into here, into these boxes. These are my coin shell, coin shell beads. I just did a video on how making really pretty easy, easy necklaces with these coin shell beads. I need to put some of these away before this whole pile falls over. Um, this is eight millimeter.
That one's a little more full. This is um, six millimeter metal for heavy metal fans or for people who like metal pieces that fit in. I used to have a whole box for, I was gonna do a whole box for every size metal, but the six millimeter seemed to be the most commonly that I used. Here's the sea glass, ceramics, and other things. Here's old wood pieces that I made years ago. Here's ceramic pieces I actually made in a kiln with clay and melted glass years ago. That's different colored clay mushed together. All like really labor intensive stuff. White sea glass, green sea glass. That's real sea glass. This is sea glass that was gifted to me from a, someone who took it off the beach in Puerto Rico. Uh, this is dyed seashell I got from the art store. This is, I have to do with these fossils, I really have to make some pendants really cool. I've been putting them off forever because it's a little, uh, I want to do a really amazing job. And I, uh, so I keep telling myself, well, tomorrow I'll have more time. Here's some tile I got from Home Depot. I got this whole giant piece of square foot tile and I took off all of the squares of tile and I glued I glue earring backs on them to make post earrings like like di hanging down diamond shape. Um, what is that? Oh, that's just some posts. Yeah, a lot of these boxes I haven't even gone through in years, or not in years, maybe months. So they need to be reorganized. There's wood, wood number two. It's for uh, men's bracelets and men's necklaces mostly, or more rustic stuff. Here's wood number one. see all kinds of fun stuff in there there's coconut shell in there there's some bone carved beads too um, there's all of the leather belts from Dan Baldwin that I need to find a place for they're just sitting there under there um, underneath all these boxes these are separate stones I would sell to people small medium large the large is really getting empty here I, I don't think they sold out I think people are accidentally moving them to this side like that looks like it goes there whatever um, I'm more focused on getting to the new location than, than keeping this one maintained. Here's a television 24 inch. I was using this to play my videos during the holidays as people walked up. Um, here's my sign. I, I, um, all these silhouettes, I had a whole bunch of them. There's, there you see, there's another anklet, uh, just stand with the mannequin foot. Um... What else can I show you guys? So here's basically what the entire kiosk looks like. This is where I sit. Technically, I do not ever sit, but I kind of put piled more stuff on that chair and put it behind me. Um, there's more, more boxes here. <laughs> there's like so many boxes I can go through, and I have even more boxes in my stock room, but this is uh, earring hooks of all different colors. Antique brass, antique copper, black gunmetal. There's the rubber backings, bright copper, silver. When I there's replenishing parts when some of these run out. Um, there is I have two two entire boxes of brass charms, two entire boxes of silver charms. All almost all all from AliExpress because that's the cheapest place to get them um, I don't even know what this, this is just a catch-all it has a ton of odds and ends a lot of giant lobster clasps um, a lot of different connectors some weird some uh, keychain parts just all kinds of all kinds of random stuff um, some crimp beads this is my, my leather working kit. I'm gonna knock everything over trying to pull this out. That's my trash can. I, I don't keep it out like that. I'm supposed to keep it hidden underneath the cabinet, but there's no room now, so it's out. Um, but anyway, here's my leather, leather working stuff. All kinds of odds and ends, and then I don't know why this is out. My hole punch should be in there. But in any case, coffee. Um, 
Yeah, this whole, oh, I didn't show you. Here's the four millimeter beads. I don't know how they, they shouldn't be on this side, but everything is where it shouldn't be today. These teeny tiny little beads, like, how did those get in there? They're, they're, um, I think those are larger. Those are uh, eight millimeter. Well, whatever. These are all four millimeter. And these need, these guys need replenishing. That's a lot of emptiness. These ones are kind of cool. They're elongated. They're shell. Anyway, um, what else can I show you? Okay, so here's, we'll back out again. Here's what it looks like from this corner. Uh, hopefully not always as messy on that table. And um, these bracelet displays with the cream colored fabric, like kind of, what's it called? Like burlap. I got those also from Store Supply Warehouse. It's great, storesupply.com and the black velvet ones I got from them. I built that little tiny box to lift that one up. Um, so you can see this entire wall is like a wooden wall. Like I said, I built an entire box to sit on top of the kiosk. Here's, here's what a kiosk looks like when, before, you know, if, if you just use their displays. It's a little different. Um, I had a whole bunch of bracelets here, beads from around the world. That's empty. So pretty much you guys get to see this. this. That's my security mirror. I don't use it to stop people from stealing as much as to see when people are looking at stuff on one side of the booth that I can't really see as well. So I can come over and talk to them before they walk away without buying anything. Um, and I'll just give one more overview. There's cabinets underneath for more supplies. Um, some of this light colored wood I meant to stain, but in the rush of the holiday season, I just wanted to get it all built and I never got a chance to stain it. Mall, mall management wasn't too happy about that. Actually, they weren't too happy about how much I stuck out more than regulation says you normally should, especially with some of these signs. But, you know, Everybody said, oh, it looks so great, and they kind of had to shrug their shoulders and be like, well, he's been a good tenant. He pays his rent and everything, so so I, I kind of kind of squeezed by there. Um, so this is pretty much the whole thing. All of these displays I built, except except for the ones I told you I bought from Store Supply. Um, what does that one say? Oh yeah. Please try on everything. Art you can wear. Um, so there you guys go. This is, I'm saying goodbye to this place. Tomorrow I'm gonna start tearing it apart and I'm gonna move into my new store with so much more room to do so many more activities not just wire wrapping but wood leather um painting all carving polymer clay other kinds of clay so much fun stuff that should not be leaning like that There's a little mirror hidden in there. That should be more prominent where someone can use it if they need. So there you guys go. Um, this is a really disorganized video. I'm just rambling. I hope you don't mind. I just wanted to tell you every last thing of all the people who ask questions about what do you do, how do you do it, what does it look like, how do you organize. Um, and again, I have a, a much larger stock room downstairs with all kinds of wood tools, uh, like like power saws and uh that's where i do painting and that's where i do um clay and all kinds of other stuff uh that stock room i'm also going to be leaving and saying goodbye to i'll take you down there real quick maybe you want to see that too let's go
This is the underground industrial part of the mall. It's like moles down here. It's a little dark and scary and there's, this is where giant trucks come underground at all hours and deliver giant amounts of things that get put into back stock rooms that the public never sees until they're put on pretty little displays in the middle of the night and then when you show up the next day it's just all looking so nice and you never knew it came off of humongous pallets and boxes and big strong men just throwing things down conveyor belts and stuff like that. Whew. So here's all kinds of boxed up stuff, getting ready to go. Here's the wood uh, tools, some of them. Here's paintings, 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 guitars, more paintings. Um, here's my crazy table. There's some um, dates, and here is some stuff that's going on the Etsy store tonight. Big surprise. Fun stuff. Um, and I built this wall. I was not supposed to, but anyway, here's more shelving and boxes. And I made three separate rooms when there's only supposed to be one room here. Here's another room. I was going to use that for my, uh, I actually built this to be a recording booth and, um, this was going to be my control center with the computer and I put a gazillion, um, I, I built this whole little tiny room thing and with a door and, uh, inside here there was all these sound tiles that were now ripping off that were, um, you know, gonna make it soundproof. There's the little window to see out and everything. But um, in any case, gonna pack this up in a couple days, say goodbye. And hopefully I'll be able to show you guys the new, all the new stuff. So um, thanks for coming with me on this journey. One more fun thing I forgot to show you. This was in the last video, but it's so fun. I built this into that. When I built a box around this, I thought, what do I do with the part in the middle? Well, I put my big speakers in there, but I thought, you know, I can use this for more. So I got to move this over, move this display over, make sure there's nothing up here. And then I actually cut into the wall, put some hinges and I have a kitchenette in here with a brand new microwave and refrigerator. And during the holidays, I had a lot of food stuffs, soups and stuffs. Just have a tiny bit left. I had peanut butter and jelly and ramen and all kinds of awesome, beautiful things. There's a toaster there too. There's one of my speakers for when I blast the music. There's the other speaker hiding. Um, believe it or not, this wooden, you could see the inside of the wooden box of the whole display. Um, it makes a great sound, like, it sounds like the inside of a guitar, like all the music reverberates and comes out the top, and it's actually a great amplifier. Um, but, anyway, I'm just pretty proud of that, because I didn't have to sneak away to rest, to, like, food places, or to, or necessarily, like, pack a lunch and worry about it staying cold or whatever, because I had my little refrigerator right there, I could put leftovers in there, I could heat them up anytime, saved me quite a bit of money um, I hope hope it saved me more money than I spent on the refrigerator and the microwave I'm pretty sure it did I, I was so crazy during that season I didn't really uh, pay attention to every single penny nickel and dime that was coming in and out but try to stay really frugal and tight and shrewd and you know sometimes you do and sometimes you just got to go a little nuts and just just make get through the day Anyway. So, it's going to be a lot of fun work. I mean, like, exercise, hard workout, free gym membership, moving all kinds of art supplies into boxes and bins, and carrying those bins into a big truck, and driving that truck, and then unloading all that stuff into a new place, and rearranging them 27,000 million times. It's going to be so much 
fun, exciting, yay! Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for hanging out with me. Thank you for coming on the journey. If you have more questions, throw them on the comments. I will answer as pretty much all of them if I can. And, um, you know, again, apologize for all the messes. If I could have shown you when it was at its pristine point. Well, during the holidays, I, there was another video where I showed you a much cleaner version of everything with more stuff stocked, but it basically looks the same. It just has more pieces of jewelry and the table looks cleaner. And I didn't go into as much detail about all my little supply boxes. So if you've hung out this far and you've made it, thank you again. You guys are the best. Thank you for watching. Give me more ideas for, man, that door is making noise. <laughs> Give me more ideas for what you want to see in upcoming videos, more, more activities. Once I get settled in my new place, hopefully in a couple of weeks, I will have so much more room, it looks like, to do all kinds of really fun projects. And I want you guys to be there with me. So have an awesome day. And I'll see you in the live show tonight if you're watching this video on Tuesday. Um, we'll try to do a live show every Tuesday. If you're watching this video another day, just have a great day or night. See you.